Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Brandon again. Today, we're going to talk about one of the most well-known barbells there is, which is the Texas Deadlift Bar by Texas Power Bars and by Buddy Caps. Now, this bar by far is the gold standard when it comes to deadlift bars, even more so than the Oki Deadlift Bar or the newer Rogue Ohio Deadlift Bar. I think anytime you see some crazy amount of weight being pulled on YouTube or Instagram and the bars bending like crazy, it's almost always a Texas Deadlift Bar. This is by far the standard, in my opinion. Now, why would someone be interested in using a bar like this? Well, the basic answer is, is most people assume that it's gonna let you lift more weight on a deadlift, which it can, but there are a few caveats with that, which we'll discuss. But let's talk about the bar and its construction in general and how it lets you potentially lift more weight. First things first, compared to a normal power bar, this bar is only 27 millimeters in diameter on the shaft, as opposed to a power bar, which is 29 millimeters. So it's a little bit thinner, which is going to allow the bar to flex or bend a little bit more. You'll also notice that this barbell is actually longer than your traditional power bar by about five or six inches. So most normal power bars are around 86 inches in length. This bar is a little over 90 inches. What that does, it allows you to push the weights out even further. So the distance between the sleeves on this particular bar is 56 inches and the weights get further and further out. I like to kind of use the analogy here of a diving board. If you've ever been on one, when you first get on it, right where it's centered or screwed in, the board's pretty stiff. But as you walk out further and further away from the center point there, the board will bend more and more and more. And if you weigh more, the board will bend even more on top of that. And the same premise works with these bars as well. Getting the weights further out and heavier weights is going to add more and more flex or bend in this bar. That's why oftentimes you see people who use deadlift bars will traditionally put a bumper plate on the first plate on the inside to again further distribute the weight off. Now what sets the Texas deadlift bar apart from some of the other barbells out there is in addition to being longer is they actually have a very thick collar on here which again allows you some more weight. So in comparison, this Texas deadlift bar roughly has an inch and a half shorter sleeves on either side because of the thickness of the collar compared to the Rogue variant deadlift bar. So it allows the weights to be out even further. So I would think that this bar is actually gonna give you a little bit more bend or flex than the Rogue version, despite otherwise being pretty similar with respect. So that's one of the things that sets these apart. So you combine the weight distribution with the thinner shaft itself, you get a lot of bend or flex in the bar. So what does that do for you? Well, when you think about it, think about if you've ever done a block pull, traditionally speaking, most people can do more on block pulls than they can of pulling off the floor because they're in a better position and the range of motion is shorter. So with this bar, because of all the flex and bend you get, especially as the weights get heavier and heavier, you'll actually find that the bar can bend quite a bit before the weight even breaks the floor. So for an example, I'll show you a clip of Garrett Blevins who was here a couple of months ago, unpeaked, just here training, doesn't typically train on a deadlift bar because he competes at the IPF world level, and he's able to pull 750 pounds like it was nothing versus his competition best of around 730, 738 pounds. And what you can see here in this video is how much higher he can get in his starting position where the bar is visibly bent a couple of inches compared to being straight and parallel with the floor before the weights actually break the floor. So he's almost actually able to do a two inch block pull on this, which again, puts him in a better position to start, engaged a little bit better, and the range of motion is shorter overall. And that's really where the deadlift bar can come into play. If you put a lot of weight on it, you get a lot of bend and flex in the bar, you're able to get in a better starting position, and you're also able to shorten your range of motion some. Especially when you combine it with things like sumo, then you just got a full bunch of cheating, but pulling sumo and on a deadlift bar kind of cancels each other out, right? Two negatives make a positive. That's maybe a video for another time. So that's really the big selling point of these bars. That being said, in my opinion, just because you go to a deadlift bar does not mean you're going to pull more weight right away. There is a lot of technique involved, especially around pulling that slack out or getting that initial bend in the bar before the weights break the floor. I know personally, the first time I used this, it really threw me for a loop because I was not used to getting as tight as I needed to. Now true, I would try to pull myself into a stiff bar and I thought I was doing a good job of getting myself out tight, but in this bar, it's almost like two lifts in one. You first have to lift all the slack out and get as tight as possible, and then you initiate the lift. But if you don't do that, you'll find that it's quite humbling and it'll probably throw you off quite a bit. And you're, for me at least, your hips shoot up and it just gets ugly. So 
This bar is tough if you're not pulling the slack out, so you really need to work on your technique if that's something you want to maximize in terms of the most weight possible with this bar. I actually think for me personally, someone who prefers to pull on a stiff bar, as weird as that sounds, I think this bar does help because this will help you work on pulling out that tightness. And what I will say is my setup has become more tight since I've been using this bar in my training here and there just because I try to kind of get that feel of pulling the slack out, which might be a little bit more difficult on a stiff bar because the bar doesn't move at all and you can't really tell if you're doing a good job or not. So that's one of the things I would suggest on this bar. So a deadlift bar, is it for you? In my opinion, it really depends. If you just want to play around with it, you have the extra money, by all means do it. If you compete in a federation that uses this as part of its competition lifts, like the USPA, for example, I do think it makes sense. If you're an IPF lifter and traditionally pull on a stiff bar and want to pull towards competition style lifts, I don't think this barbell is really for you necessarily. I also don't think this is a bar that you would get as your first barbell because you wouldn't want to squat or bench on it because that flex and that bending, which is so helpful on deadlifts, can really throw you off on some of those other lifts like squat and bench. And we'll kind of break down some other reasons why you wouldn't want to do that. In order to do that though, we need to actually talk about this particular bar itself. So as I mentioned, the whole Texas deadlift bar, buddy caps, Texas power bars in general, is pretty iconic in the strength industry. And I think part of that besides just the name is also the look. They almost always have a black zinc shaft and raw steel sleeves. And that's exactly what this bar has. And regardless if you're talking about the power bar, the squat bar, the deadlift bar, they almost always have that same finish. Now, one of the things that's interesting is Texas Power Bars has finally come up with their own website in 2018, after several decades of only being available through resellers, and they now offer some other variants in terms of the finish on both the shaft and the sleeves as well. So for example, the Texas All-American Bar that I own has chrome sleeves, which I think hold up a lot better and look a lot nicer. But again, it is at an added cost if you're interested. So speaking about the sleeves in general, one of the things I will say also that make this bar iconic are the end caps. You have the Texas State Outline with buddy cap signature inside. The other end, you have the bar designation, which is really nice because if you have a bunch of different bars from Texas Power Bars, you can easily identify which bar is which, and hopefully that'll lead people from not benching or squatting with these, although I have seen them in some instances, which is always very cringe-worthy. Sticking with the sleeves here, you also notice that it has a two-pin design to hold the actual sleeves on, which is different than the industry standard these days of the snap ring. Iconic, yes. Functional, I would probably prefer to see a snap ring design. I think those are easier to get on and off if you need to do maintenance. The upside is you shouldn't have to do maintenance on a bar like this ever. I've also talked about the length of the collars on the sleeves. Again, it's kind of a Texas power bar standard. Although if you follow them on Instagram, you'll notice that they are now testing a thinner collared bar as well. So that'll be interesting to see when it comes to fruition. And on these actual collars themselves inside, they use bronze bushings. Again, industry standard and shouldn't really be worried too much about the spin on a deadlift bar. So I won't talk about them too much. Let's talk about the shaft, which is the thing that everybody really cares about. So as I mentioned, 27 millimeters in diameter. This one is black zinc. The knurling on here is very aggressive, which should be expected when you're talking about a bar that's specifically made for a lift that's dependent on your grip. So aggressive, not the most aggressive, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because this bar will eat into your hands as is and anymore it could get pretty ugly. So the term grip and rip could really come into play here, especially if you pull with a hook grip. Your thumbs will not like you very much using this bar consistently. I think one of the things though that I've seen with the black zinc in general is those Knurlings are typically dulled a little bit just because you're dealing with the steel and then the black zinc on top and then your hand itself. So there's an extra layer between yourself and the steel. But again, I don't think anyone will have any complaints with the knurling on here. Speaking of the knurling, you'll notice that it's just in this region here. So it's not extended out to the sleeves. That's because you should not be gripping a deadlift bar out here like you would on squats or some Olympic lifts. That's also why you don't have any center knurling because this bar shouldn't be on your back. It's just where you would grip the bar. And again, I think it works out very, very well. It does have knurl marks for powerlifting, which I find a little bit interesting. I don't think they're necessary, only because at least personal experience is when I set up for a deadlift, I typically use the start of the knurling to really gauge where I'm going to be gripping, uh, but they are here if you need them. So that is the Texas deadlift bar. I think when it comes to deadlift bars in general, this one is the king of the crowd, king of the crop, cream of the crop. It's the best damn deadlift bar you can buy it. Traditionally the best price now that you can buy them direct through Texas Power Bars themselves. 
Uh, not to say that the Rogue one is any worse or the Oki deadlift bar is any worse. Those are great barbells as well. If I had to pick though, I would probably pick this one. Just know that again, if you're going to go with a deadlift bar specifically, don't assume that you're automatically going to be able to pull more weight. A lot of it depends on how much you're able to pull the slack out of that bar and also how much weight you're loading on to the ends. But if you're leaning to it, this is definitely a bar to consider. If you have any other questions about it, let me know in the comment section below. In the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you next video.